Let's take a look at the absence management module that is available for the on-premise version of Bitrix 24. The absence management module allows you to easily select and request your leave by providing a start date with the additional bonus of booking in half days. So you might want to book a morning off or an afternoon off. And we can also have multiple types of leave that allow you to take the amount of days off your allowance. Now let's come back to requesting the leave in a moment. But let's have a look at some of the other key features of the absence management module. First of all, we'll take a look at what is available on the front end. So if you're a member of the HR team or an administrator, then we can click on the absence management module here in the left-hand menu. And here you'll be able to see that we can set individuals leave allowance. So if I were to click on edit here, you can see that these three users, Mike, Mark, and Mary, each have an allowance entitlement of 21 days. We can also see how many days they have remaining. And we can also see how many days they have currently booked off and are also currently awaiting approval. And this is really good. And it's a key feature that the standard leave module in Bitrix does not have. So what you can do is you obviously you can set an allowance on an employee by an employee basis. And once that allowance is reached, then it will actually deny the user to request any additional vacation days or holiday days. So this is the first feature that is quite a powerful tool inside the absence management module. The other is if we were to go to our profile in the top right hand corner and open the profile up, then each user can see their own remaining leave entitlement on their own profile. They will also be able to see all of the leave that they have currently booked and all the leave that they have currently pending approval. And we'll come back to this page a little bit later on when we request the leave. So that's what's available for the absence management module on the front end. Let's take a look on the on-premise version in the control panel. So in here, if I click on absence manager here, then you can see that we can have the administrative section of our absence module. So if we click on the general tab here, we have a who is away widget. So if somebody has leave already approved, then we can display that to the right hand side of the activity stream on a widget. We also give them the ability to create absences in the past. So maybe you do or you don't want people to request or post book that absence in. In that case, you would just deselect it and you would not allow a user to uh, book the leave after they have actually already taken the leave itself. Uh, the group with the manage permissions and where we were at the front end allowing you to increase or decrease the allowance. This is the group that you would be able to select here. We have a default responsible person of who the approver is. Now how the absence management module works out of the box is that when a user requests leave, it will automatically get sent to their supervisor within their department. If they don't have a supervisor, then it will fall back to the default responsible person here. And in this case, it would be Max Smith. What we can also do, and I'll show you this when we look into the workflow, is that we can have a two-step approval. So it might be that we have our supervisor approve the leave. 
as the first step of approval. And if we were to put a HR supervisor in this particular area here, then the second stage of approval for your leave would go to this individual that you would enter in here. I mentioned that you can have multiple types of leave that deduct the days from your allowance, and you can select them in here. We can also add additional types of leave, and they can also be made available in here too. In our case, we're just going to have the default setting of annual leave to be the only type of leave that deducts from the user's allowance. What we can also see here is the working time. So I mentioned that when you request leave, that you can have half days for the morning or half days for the afternoon. The reason why we have a working start time and a working middle and an end is because when that leave gets approved, we'll be able to see what time that individual is out of the office from. If it was a morning, it would be nine until 1 p.m. If it was an afternoon, it would be one till 6 p.m. And that's really important because when you're trying to add tasks uh, in the Bitrix 24 system and you go to add a responsible person, you need to know whether that person is available. And if they're not, then it will show you with a little, the responsible person with a little vacation icon associated to their name, saying that they're currently away from the office. So it will mean that you can assign tasks to people that are available and not on leave. We can also set public holidays. So if you have national holidays throughout the year, then we can set multiple different types of holidays and assign those holidays to individual users or groups of users. So in our case here, we can see that we have the UK holidays. We can also have another group and assign it to another group of users, and they might want the US holidays, uh, different types of uh, different days of the year. Uh, and that's really good if you have offices in multiple locations. If a user books a leave over a public holiday, then it will obviously not take it from their allowance. Okay. And also pointed out on here are the weekend days. So not everybody's weekend days are set to Saturday and Sunday. In this case for our UK role, then they are the Saturday and Sunday. And again, this is because if a user requests two weeks leave and it goes over one weekend, obviously that's going to be 10 working days. And we want it to take 10 days off the allowance, not 12, because we do not work on Saturday and Sunday. So that is what this public holiday section for. And then finally, what we also have is two ways of setting and resetting the leave at the end of each year. What we can do is we can recharge the leave. So that would add set value on here to add an additional 20 days. So it might be that you have 20 days each year on your leave allowance. If you have five remaining come the end of the year, then it could add the, the recharge amount to that leave. So then you would have 25 days. Or alternatively, we can set the amount of days. So if I had five days remaining at the end of the year, it would then set my leave allowance back to 20 at the start of January. So you can either recharge or you can synchronize and set your leave, depending on how your leave entitlement works. So these are the administration settings that we can set in here. We've made the module to be as flexible as possible. So let's now take a look at what happens when you request the leave. So let's go back to our feed on the front end here. And then if I click on more, click on workflow, 
and click on request leave. And I'm going to set my request for the 7th of June. And we'll just request a week off until the 11th of June. I can say that I want to have a vacation. I can specify the type of leave. In our case, we're going to have a look at booking our annual leave off. So you can see here, we have multiple types of leave. If I wanted to upload a file, I could do, it's not a required field. And once I click on send, what that's going to do is it's going to send my leave request to my supervisor. How supervisors work in Bittrex is if I was just to go to the employee section on the left hand menu, you can see here that my user here, Max Smith, is in the IT UK department. And you can see Mark Hope is my supervisor. So my request would always go to Mark Hope. So let's go back to our feed and you can see that this request has been sent to Mark. Now I'm just going to switch accounts and I'm now on logged in as Mark Hope. If I refresh the activity stream, I'll be able to see the request that has come in. You can see the duration is five days. You can see that Max Smith has requested those holidays from the 7th of June until the 11th of June. So I can see it not only on the activity stream, but I can also see it in my workflows too. So if I click into workflows in the left-hand menu, I can see that all my workflow assignments would appear in here, and then I can either approve or reject it. In our case, I'm gonna mark it as approved, and then that will fall out of Mark Hope's workflow assignments task list. And then if I was to go in, back into logged in as Max Smith, just refresh this feed here, you can see that my request has been approved. What we'll also be able to see is if I go into my profile and click into my profile here, you can now see that I originally had 21 days uh, remaining leave entitlement. I've just booked five days off on here, and we can now see that I have 16 days remaining. I can also see in here my approved leave is set to uh, the request that I had just made. And then what I can also do here as I'm the logged in user, Max Smith, if I wanted to, I could click on cancel leave and then that would add those five days back on to my 16 days entitlement. It would also notify my supervisor that I had canceled my leave, and it would also take it off the absence chart. So when I made that request and it was approved, not only did it remove it from my leave entitlement, I can now click into the absence management module here. And I can see the user, Max Smith, currently has five booked days off. Now, obviously when that date passes, that will then set back to zero because it will no longer be booked. But the 16 days will remain as my entitlement. Again, when that request was made and it was approved, I click into time and reports here. I can click into the absence chart, click into June when I requested it off, and I can see that the entry has been made into that particular week here. So it's going from 9 a.m. on the 7th of June through to 6 p.m. on the 11th of June. And again, that's with the settings of the working time. We start work at 9 a.m. We finish work at 6 p.m. and it's booked it to ensure, as I mentioned previously, if somebody was ever to try and assign you a task or any other type, kind of action in Bittrex, it would tell them and notify them that Max Smith is currently uh, on leave. 
So the absence tool and the, and the leave request is a fantastic feature uh, and tool to be able to allow your employees to book leave and allow them to see how many days they have remaining. Let's just have a look at how it works in the background, just so it's quite clear of how the process would work. If I click into workflows and click into workflows in the activity stream, and let's click into request leave form. Now I can see here that all of the previous requests that have ever come in, and that's mainly because I'm an administrator, I have access to every request that has been made. Let's take a look at actually the workflow that sits in behind this particular request. So we have two business processes here, one that gets triggered when the request comes in, and one that gets triggered when a user requests to cancel their leave. If I click into request leave form, it is a state-driven business process. When the leave gets requested, we can see that it'll start at the validation stage, go all the way through, have some system checks, and if it's okay, we'll go to the request state here. If I click into this request, we can see that it sends an email out. We can then see that the first approval block is added here. And that is the approval block for your supervisor. If there isn't a supervisor, it will fall back to that default responsible person you set in your administration settings. If this lead got denied, then it would follow the denied route here. Then we'd check to see if it had been denied. We'll set the employee notification to say that their leave has been refused, and then we would end the business process. If it got approved, then the next check would be that second approval option that we had in our administration settings. If you have set a HR individual that needs to approve it after the supervisor had approved it, then we'll flow down, we'll send the member of HR a email to say a new leave request has been sent and then they would be able to approve it on the second step here. That would then set it to approved. Again, we'll then check to see if it's been approved or not. If it's not, we'll notify the user. If it has, then what we will do is we'll deduct the holiday days, create the absence and add it to the absence chart. Now, if you didn't have a second uh, approver, not everybody does, we can still go down this side here and then we'll set the status to approved. And again, we will follow and flow down to deduct the holidays as such. So that just gives you a bit of flexibility whether you just want your supervisor to approve or your supervisor and a member of the HR team. So we just wanted to show you that just to show you the mechanics of what is sat behind the workflow. Now you don't have to alter this at all. You can come in here and modify the email templates if you wanted to. Everybody that gets sent a leave request, for example, your supervisor or the HR team or the default responsible person, they will all receive an email to notify them that a leave request has been made and it needs to be actioned within Bittrex itself. So hopefully that's given you a good overview of the absence management module. That is a run through from the features that the request has to the administration management section of the absence management module and also the approval element. Hope you found that useful. Bye for now.